If you want to know the speed of a golf green, all you need is this. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda. I know that sometimes you pick up your putter, you hit a putt, and you swear the green is fast or you swear it's slow. It's not a problem with you. The fact that you don't know what speed the green is is a problem with the world. But now you don't have to wonder. You can know exactly how fast greens are with this little guy here. I know it looks like a green bar or a measuring stick or something like this. This is actually a stimp meter. Green speeds are actually measured in stimp. So a seven, eight, nine is kind of a slow green. Uh, 10, 11, 12 is kind of a fast green. 13, 14, 15 are kind of professional championship greens. And the way they test green speed is actually fairly ingenious and quite simple. Mr. Stimson made this little device where we can roll a ball on a green and calculate what the stimp is. So let's take a close look at this and show you the features and then we'll try it out. All right, so let's take a close look at these mm, scientific devices here. There is a companion app here as well. You can download it in the app store, DP Golf. So if you get these, go ahead and download that. I probably will too. Probably just make the calculations a little easier, although I don't think the calculations are that hard to figure out. Now, first of all, I want to show you what I get here, I get the stip meter bar. It's pretty long. I call this like 36 inches long. It looks like a yardstick. And I wanted to show this to you because I know some people are making these out of angle iron and other pieces of material, but I think this is true to the actual measuring stick that they use. So you can see here, it's probably three millimeters thick, two and a half millimeters thick. But first of all, you can see here that way it's bent is not 90 degrees. It might be a little hard to see there, but I think it's actually like 137 degrees, something like that. So there is something to how wide open it is, and that is hopefully to keep the ball in place and allow it to roll. So it's actually pretty flat, -ish, right? The other thing I want to show you here is up at the top, we get a little hole. Now, this is not necessarily relevant to the stint meter function. It's to hang it on your wall or the pegboard in your shop there so that is there and then we also have this little kind of coke bottle shape here so it makes it a little easier to grab and lift up this is the hole that the ball will go in and you can see it's kind of a little sausage shaped it's kind of about the width of my finger here and that is specific to releasing the ball when it gets to the right angle so you'll just kind of lift this up 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 up, up and then the ball will break free now i'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom because they've also mentioned that we have this little forked shape down on the bottom. And that is specific because it allows this to sit on the green or on the ground and not have this middle channel being point of pressure into the grass. So this allows the middle to not necessarily push into that grass and it allows it to be a little flatter so that the ball transitions a little more smoothly onto the green. I think it works. In fact, depending on how high you raise this, Obviously, there'd be a lot of space, but, you know, right about here, 20 or 25 degrees, I'm guessing, it's kind of perfectly flush. So I actually think that's a smart little design element. Now, what we have to do is actually see if it works. All right, guys. So I'm over here at the simulator, and we've got this practice putting green here, and it's got some undulations and stuff. So I want to test the stint meter on this artificial turf here and just see what it's running. You know, it's not that I need it to be the exact same thing that I'm putting on here, but you just kind of want to know, is it fast? Is it slow? How much of my speed or the length of my putting stroke should I adjust for when I get out there and the greens are wet and slow? So what I thought I would do here is just test it. Now, I will tell you that this green is set up purposely with break in it. And so actually, that's one of the things that you have to compensate for. And so what you do, just kind of like a Bonneville speed run, is you measure the distance in one direction, and then you measure the distance the ball goes in the exact opposite direction, and then you average them and that gives you the stem. So let's get on it and see if it works. I'm gonna put the ball in the stick right here and just gradually lift it up until it rolls out. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and measure that. And then I'm going to do the other way. I'm just gonna look this way. I'll let it roll that way. All right, so what's interesting is it actually did have two different distances. Like I said, the break is probably what caused that. So going that way, it actually rolled 12 feet. Going this way, it actually rolled 13 feet. 
And so what I have to do now is just average them and I can just tell you that's 12 and a half feet. So this is a 12.5 stem, I think. That's how we calculated on this little astroturf. And now it's actually pretty firm, pretty hard. I'm not sure what's under here, but actually a 12 and a half, that's actually probably pretty similar to what you should expect when you're out playing a really good golf course. And so your putting practice on here is probably going to translate to the course, I would think. Your speed and lag training on here would probably be a pretty good idea. The other thing I really love about this simple little device here is that now you can test, say, the course that you always play at, but you could also test different materials. So let's say you were using one of those putting mats. You could find out what the stimp is. If you have a carpet, you know, a carpet that you put on at your office and your hotel at your home, you could test that and figure out, hey, is this a little slower or a little faster than what I would play on the golf course? And so you could actually kind of use it for training. The other thing that you might be saying, well, Pete, I don't have 13 feet of runway on my little practice putting mat or even a rug at home. Well, they actually sell this in half sizes. And so what you actually have to do is you have to double, I think, the numbers that you get, but then it will only roll out five feet or six feet. And then you just measure the direction the other way again. But then if you get 6.5, you know, that is basically a 13 stem. Or if you get five and a quarter, you know, that's 10 and a half stem. So you can test shorter differences on materials too. So pretty cool. It kind of makes me want to go to the store and test some of the green carpets and see if I could just carpet a room and make it look like a green and actually know that the speed is pretty accurate to actual grain. So this little device, this little stint meter here is actually pretty clever. Seems to work. I do believe the results here. And this one was the most inexpensive one that I have ever found. I looked all over. Some of them are like 150 or 200 bucks. So if you want to pick up one that's about $40, I'll put a link to this in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.